So I realized a lot of people really struggled with the quiz that we took on, I think it was on Wednesday of last week. Um, so I just wanted to do another practice worksheet where there's just a ton of solving um, rational number addition and subtraction problems. Um, so I'm going to go through and solve a few of them with you guys. Um, just so you can hear me explaining how to solve them again. I've got the directions written up top. Um, so first thing that you should do is make proper fractions improper. Make sure we have common denominators and then add or subtract the numerators. So for this one here, let's work on number one first. So we have, let's see, can I make this bigger? Yes. We have five over four plus negative seven over four. So the first thing I'm gonna ask myself, is there any proper fractions that I need to turn in proper? Since there's no big number out front, kind of like how there is number two, I know that I don't have to do that step. Second step is getting common denominators. So let's look at the bottom. Denominator means the bottom. We've got a four and a four. Those are common numbers. They're the same exact number, four and four. So I know that I don't even have to do step two. The next thing that I'm gonna do is add or subtract my numerator. So for this problem, I am looking at this right here. So I'm looking at five plus negative seven. You're allowed to use a calculator for this section. So if you don't know what this is off the top of your head or you're questioning yourself, just use the calculator to double check. So we've got a positive five plus a negative seven. That gives us a negative two. And so we're just gonna put it all together. Our numerator is a negative two. Our denominator is a positive four. I wanna keep that in simplest terms. Um, so I know two and four are both divisible by two. So I'm gonna divide both the numerator and denominator by two. Two divided by two gives me a one and I'm gonna keep my negative on it. Four divided by two gives me a two. And so my final answer is going to be negative one half for that first problem. Let's move on to, I'm gonna do number four. So for number four, the first thing that I'm looking for is proper fractions. So I can see that both of these numbers are proper fractions. So I'm gonna to have to convert them both to improper fractions. So I've got, five times two, which is 10, plus four, which is 14. We're gonna keep our denominator, and then I'm gonna put that negative sign with my 14. It's still a subtraction problem, so I'm gonna put my subtraction sign. And then we've got seven times two, which is 14. 14 plus two is going to give me a 16 keep my over seven, and then this is a negative number as well, so I'm gonna put a negative number there. We're done with our first step. Our second step is going to be um, getting common denominator. So the easiest thing that you can do if you don't know what the LCM is, is to just multiply the denominators by each other. What I mean by that is I see a seven over on this side, so I'm gonna multiply this fraction by seven. I see a five over here, so I'm gonna multiply this fraction by five. That is always going to give me a common denominator that works because I'm just multiplying it by that other number. It's not always going to be the least common multiple, so you might have to do a little bit more um, reducing at the end to get down to your um, fraction in like the least number of terms. Um, but if you don't know how to get your least common multiple for your denominators, this is a good solution for you. Um, so I just multiplied by the other one. Whatever we do at the bottom, we have to do the top. So I'm gonna multiply the top by seven up here, and I'm gonna be multiplying the top by five on that second fraction. Again, you get calculators, please just use them. I know that five times seven and seven times five should both give me a 35. So my new denominator is going to be a 35. So I'm just gonna write that down really quickly because that's not changing. I'm going to keep my subtraction and both of my negatives. 
And now I'm going to figure out my new numerators. So I've got 7 times 14, which is going to give me a 98. And I have 16 times 5, which gives me a 80. Now that I have common denominators, I can move on to step three. We're going to use green for this, where I either add or subtract my numerators. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I've got negative 98 minus negative 80. If you have a calculator, use it because it's going to make your life so much easier. If not, make sure you're KCOing this problem. And then you've got negative 98 plus 80. So negative 98 plus 80 is going to give me negative 18. So that's going to be my numerator is negative 18. And then I just keep that denominator as 35. And that is my final answer there. It's negative 18 over 35. Let's do number six together as well. So if you notice that number six is a little bit different than what we typically work with, because we've got that negative two and it's plus negative one seventh. So you might be confused on how to start this because that first number is not written as a fraction at all. But I know that any number can be written as a fraction if it's rational. And so what we're going to do is make that number into a fraction. I know that negative two divided by one is going to be negative two. And so to make this into a fraction, all I have to do is put it over top of a one and it's there. My first step is making sure that we have improper fractions or we just don't have proper fractions, which we don't in this case. So we can move on to step two, which is going to be getting that common denominator. The least common multiple between 1 and 7 is 7. And so I know that my um, denominators are going to be 7. So I'm going to write those down. And I'm going to keep all the signs that I have. So this one has a negative. So I'm going to keep my negative. It's a um, addition problem. So I'm adding my addition. And that second number is also negative. So I'm going to add that negative there too. 1 7th doesn't change at all because the denominator stayed a 7. And so I'm just going to keep my 1 in my numerator. This one, however, I'm asking myself, how do I go from 1 to 7? And that's just multiplying by 7. It's always going to be a multiplication. Um, so 1 times 7 is 7. Whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do the top. 7 times 2 gives me a 14. And remember to keep that negative with it. My third step is adding or subtracting my numerators. So I've got my numerators right here. I've got a negative 14 plus a negative 1. Use your calculator if you're unsure, but you should get negative 15 as your answer. So that tells me when I add those two numbers together, my numerator is going to be a negative 15. My denominator stays the same at 7. And so my answer for number six is negative 15 over seven. So I've done three of these problems for you out of 16. So hopefully you get those three correct on your answer sheet. If you've got any questions over any of the other problems, please just send me an email um, and I will be glad to help you out.